Hi there, well I'd like to thank everybody for the help and support and advice regarding my uh, current hobby machine problems. And I got some fantastic advice um, w w when I pu published my last video. And uh, a lot of people are suggesting that maybe I need to sort of look at the sort of machining basics really. And sort of stepping back a bit and just making sure that um, everything's sort of like held down correctly. Um, there's no vibrations, offering tailstock support, and just basic stuff like that. So in this video, I'm going to uh, revisit all of that and uh, see if I can sort out these uh, hobbing machine problems. So I thought I'd put this four jaw chuck on the uh, spindle, uh, just to make sure that there's uh, absolutely no run out. So this is my new setup with tailstock support. So the gear on the right is the one I've just hobbed and the one on the left was made by a, a normal gear cutter and uh, as you can see here this root area if you call it that is squarer than that area. Um, teeth look very similar. Place the newest one on top. It's extremely close. Not much in it at all to be honest. And um, the engagement's pretty good. I mean when looking at it like that, this root area here doesn't look so bad. There's no sort of like movement. However, I've just made another one on the hob, hobby machine, and uh, if I put this alongside it, so both these have been hobbed, you can see that very slight movement there, so that's not great. I mean, in, in a sort of like a model engineering world that I live in, <laughs> uh, it's probably acceptable, but uh, in a commercial environment, I would imagine uh, that that will be no good and you get, you're going to get wear on the teeth. Now, this is the normal gear cutter I used previously, and this is the one that's hobbed, this gear. And if I put the tooth in there, can see the difference. I'll show you under the microscope. So you can see there the, the gear profile isn't perfect at all. square at the uh, bottom of the root. Okay so as another test what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut a 70 tooth gear on this piece of aluminium and um, the diameter of this should be 70 plus 2 72 divided by 48 which equals to one and a half inches and that's spot on one and a half inches. So I'll um, start everything up, I'll move the cutter just to touch it and then I'll uh, advance the uh, table in 45 thou and make the cut.
So this is the 70 tooth gear and uh, the profile looks a lot better. Now I've not got a normal gear cutter for 72 teeth. I've, I've got a number four which goes between 26 and 34. So we'll just have a look at that just out of curiosity. I mean that looks pretty good. And if I uh, compare it with a, a gear that I cut with the normal gear cutter. That looks really good. So the gear underneath is the hopped gear. And the gear on top is the one I uh, made with the normal cutter. If we just pull it back a bit. You can see that the teeth profile are very, very close. Just that root area, still a bit square. But certainly an improvement. And this is my 32 tooth hobbed gear on the right compared to the 70 tooth gear on the left and as you can see the uh, the smaller gear the, the teeth are just slightly narrower and the, the gap at the bottom bigger well having had some success with aluminium on that 70 tooth gear I'm going to have another go at a 32 tooth gear in aluminium Well the 32 tooth aluminium gear is on the right and the uh, mild steel one is on the left and the profile's pretty much the same so it's not a material issue sort of thin teeth virtually identical and this is my gear cutter on the left so if we look at the uh, mild steel gear quite gappy. The aluminium one. Probably a bit better actually. Now strangely the uh, 32 tooth aluminium gear and the 70 tooth aluminium gear so they have to look pretty good. Pretty happy with that. I'm just wondering whether it's got something to do with motor rigidity. And I've noticed here in the uh, driver manual there's um, this little dial here that's set to zero default, factory default, and it's got a velocity loop of zero position loop of KP of 25, velocity loop KP of 25 and it sort of says here at 25 and 25 indicate the rigid rigidity is weak 105 composite parameters indicate the rigidity is strong sometimes if the motor will rotate after stopping it can increase the value of position loop KP but if the value is too large the motor will have noise so it's factory default is 0 25 25 so here 0 25 25 25 I'm just wondering whether to go with 
So I could go with five or six, couldn't I? Maybe I'll set it to six and see what happens. So the gear on the left is a 32 tooth gear made out of uh, mild steel with a uh, rigidity setting of uh, number six and it looks identical to the uh, one previously made. So it doesn't appear to be that. So just as a comparison, these are 32 teeth mild steel gears hobbed recently and uh, I've put them on these um, studs you might call them and uh, these are uh, 0.666 of an inch uh, distance apart so it's the, it's the proper sort of centre positions and if you look at the scope I mean to be honest they're not too bad maybe I'm aiming for perfection and I'll never achieve it as you can see here you've got that movement there so what I'll do now is a comparison I'll switch these around and uh, get uh, two 32 teeth uh, gears that I cut with the uh, single cutter and these are the gears made with a single cutter how nice are those Those are absolutely perfect. So I woke up this morning and had a bit of inspiration. And uh, on the left hand side here is a, a 32 tooth gear I uh, cut yesterday. And on the right hand side is the actual hob that cut it. And as you can see here, the gap between the teeth is virtually a perfect match to the actual little cutters on the hob so um, you know there's there's no way it could cut a gear with wider teeth so to me it's just a feature of the hob I'm experiencing and this is a 21 tooth gear on the left hand side and the hob on the right and as you can see there the cutter of the hob pretty much matches the um, inside profile where the teeth is, the root area. And uh, I appreciate when it comes round, it'll 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 cut the uh, top of the teeth in a slightly different profile. So uh, I don't think I can get any better result than that, to be honest. I think it's just a feature of the hob. And this is the 70 tooth gear made out of aluminium. Um, the gears on the left and the uh, hob is on the right and as you can see there the uh, cutters on the hob pretty much totally match the uh, gap between the teeth on the gear well that was an interesting uh, little exercise and um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the, there has been some rigidity issues um, so I really appreciate sort of like the uh, the comments on that and also uh, there was run out um, on the actual uh, collet chuck uh, that was attached to the hobbing machine but replacing that with a four jaw chuck that sort of addresses that problem because you can just put a gauge on it and uh, get it spot on uh, so having resolved those issues and um, I, I, I think I started chasing my tail a little bit and losing focus and um, have, having looked at it again in comparison to the, the actual cutters on the hob, I'm really convinced that uh, it's just a feature of the hob. Um, big gears um, look absolutely perfect, but as you gradually come down to getting smaller and smaller, there seems to be a slight increase in the, uh, the, the gap between those teeth. Marginal. Um, I just think it really is a feature of the hob and if it was an issue with um, missing pulses or synchronization um, the, 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 the teeth wouldn't look as good as they are um, certainly on those big that, that, that big gear and if it was an, an issue 
like that, then you would expect to experience um, more problems the bigger the gear is, as a, you know, because there's more pressure on that particular gear. So I'm totally convinced now that um, my hobby machine is working perfectly. Uh, you know, the, the program's spot on. I'm not moving, losing any pulses anywhere. And um, I think it's good to go. I just think it's a feature of the hob. Um, so uh, I, I really appreciate everybody's sort of help and support on this one. It has been a bit of a brain teaser, but I think we got there in the end. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.